in the last few episodes we studied the experiencer and answered a few basic questions tried to find answers to some of the advanced questions now there is an important question which says that why should i even bother about these things what is my relation to this experiencer or what is my relation to this existence let it be there let there be experiencer my life is not really affected by these things all i need is my bread and butter and shelter and i'm happy i don't need to investigate these things in my opinion that is fine that is very good that simply means that uh, you are not suffering and therefore there is no need for you to know anything and as we saw before that um, in fact there is nothing to know so these questions they trouble those who are not satisfied in some way not happy with the life not happy with the existence not happy with what they are and so on so let us try to find what is my relation to this existence can i simply tell it to go away and live my life comfortably will it make any difference if i know all these things am i separate independent from these uh, very airy fairy kind of topics i don't see anything that relates them to me they are of no use for me so whether this thing is of any use for us can be investigated by asking ourselves who am i and what is this i who is saying all these things who is thinking all these things in other words what is my essence what is my essential nature and probably finding an answer to that that question can help us to find a relation between what is and what i am so these two words the true nature and essence they mean the same thing as we saw in the earlier episode on the nature we defined the nature there and the word essence points to something very similar that the essence is that when everything that is non essential is removed that which remains is the essence this is very close to the definition of the true nature which says that uh, all that which is unnecessary is removed then whatever remains is the true nature you cannot remove the true nature otherwise nothing remains and we saw some examples also that the true nature of uh, waves is water the true nature of the gold or ornaments is gold and the true nature of a clay pot is clay you can make a pot out of the clay you can color it you can shape it in any way you can put things into it you can write your name on it but the essential nature remains the clay because all these add-ons can be removed and still the clay will stay the clay will remain in other words you can change the other things about the pot about the ornament about the water but it is going to still remain clay so the essence is that which remains when all that which is unnecessary has been removed and what is unnecessary then if you can change it if you can substitute it with something else it is unnecessary it is not the essential thing so for example in the water the waves keep changing they can take any shape but they are not the necessary they are not that which is essential the water is necessary you if you take away the water no waves nothing remains there similarly the gold ornaments can keep changing the shape and color and size and whatever but the gold is necessary the gold does not change so all that which is changing is unnecessary is non essential so we are trying to find what is my essential nature and we will need to discard all that which is unnecessary and we will arrive at my essential nature so let us try to do that and now many of you must have already guessed it that because it is so simple straightforward we have seen that all the experiences they change while the experiencer remains unchanging and we saw that that is the only thing that is unchanging everything else is changing impermanent so the essence is the experiencer and it is not only my essence it is the essence of everything else everything that changes so this is the straightforward answer there is another way to know my essence and it is based on the 
criterion for truth what is the most certain truth and many would like to say that the most certain is that i exist i am because if i am not there then nobody even remains to tell what is true what is not this is the most certain that i am now according to our criteria that which changes is not true that which remains and changing is the truth if i am the most certain truth then i must be the one who does not change if the i changed it is not true and therefore i don't exist and it is an absurdity it is a contradiction because it is i who is saying that i don't exist that is an impossibility so the i is a certainty and therefore i am the one who does not change and there is only one thing which, which does not change and that is the experiencer which we studied and which we are studying right now also now it has simply taken on another name which is i it is not that i became the experiencer it is that i realized that i am the experiencer and that which is most true the ultimate truth is nothing but me so that is another way to find out my essential nature and uh, this is what can be called as self realization for the first time in your life you know what you are what is your real nature what is your essence what is your truth once you know this everything else becomes easy now your initial questions are probably answered what is my uh, relation to the existence well the experiencer is the aspect of the existence which is looking which is watching which is observing and i am that i am existence itself essentially while the other things that are experiences they come and go they are not essential they are unnecessary they keep coming and they keep going it is a continuous flow which i am witnessing as the experiencer everything comes and goes i remain i am the truth actually nothing else really exists because it is changing it is false and we have a name for that we call them appearances or we call it illusion anything that can be experienced is an illusion so nothing exists apart from this existence whose nature is the experiencer the empty pure infinite peaceful partless non dimensional blissful etc etc experiencer another name for that is i there is another way to arrive at the same conclusion which is the way of negation so even after knowing this there can be some doubts in your mind it probably i need to double check it it cannot be like this my experience says something else my direct experience and logic tells me something else so let us try to find it let us try to go through some of the things that i may suspect it is me probably i am not the experiencer it is something metaphysical something philosophical which the which these crazy philosophers talk about i am a simple person here i need to eat i need to sleep there are so many needs i was born and i am going to die one day this is me and that is all is my essence my essence is that this thing which is born which grows which struggles for survival and then one day dies anyway that is me so all we can do is we can take one thing at a time which is believed to be me and then we can negate it we can discard it we are trying to discard that which is non essential that which is unnecessary that which does not define me that can be substituted that can be changed so let us start by taking some examples probably i am an object just like there are so many objects around me i am one of these objects which even a simple minded person is going to deny no no i am not this object i am not this table i am not this chair what about your car no no that is mine but i like it but it is not me what about your gold what about your money what about your relations no they are all mine but not me really so even a simple person will be able to discard the objects as not me but he will own them he will say they are mine i use them so they are mine now the most common object that everybody says is me is the body and almost 99.99% of people are going to say that i am the body 
One of the main reasons is they have never experienced the I without a body. That is how they know. It is my essential part. If you remove the body, I won't be there. So let us check. When the body was born, it was a tiny body. After a few years, the tiny body is gone. It was a child's body. After a few years, that is also gone. It is a young man's body. After some years, that is also gone. Now it is old man's body. And after some year, that is also gone. Now I never say that I am all these bodies. Why? Because I never feel like I am many. I can say that I was small. I was young. I was old. I changed. But that is not our direct experience. The body changed. I kept calling them as I, but the I never changed. The body kept changing. The body of the baby was not essential, really. Otherwise, it would have stayed. Remember, the essential thing stays. The non-essential changes. So the body changed. It is non-essential to me. I am the one who owns the body. And many people are going to call it as my body. They do not say I body. <laughs> that, that sounds really, really funny. It happens sometimes that I say I am sitting. If you observe carefully, the body is sitting. When you say I was asleep, you observe it, you will find the body was asleep. So what we are describing is the states of the body. I am always that which observes the states of the body. You can say probably that baby was not me. I don't know. I don't even remember. The current body is me. Remember, the food you ate yesterday is the body now. And that food will be burnt up in the cells of the body. New cells will be formed. The old cells are going to die. And the burnt up food is exhaled out of breath. Now you need to eat more because the food is exhausted. The raw material is exhausted. You feel hungry, you eat. And this food again becomes the body. This is going on every second. Every second millions of the cells are dying. It is changing right now also. The body that was one second ago is not here right now. But you do not say that I am gone. You say that I stayed. So much so that we cut off some parts of the body that are non-essential and not painful. For example, hair, nails, we shave them off. We never say that I am reduced by some amount. Now the fat changes in the body, the muscles change in the body. And the I remains. We say the body has changed. Sometimes in short form we say that I changed. That is simply identification with the body. That is how we are indoctrined to say things. That is how we are brainwashed to talk about the I, like a body. Because we see that the other person is the other body. We do not see anything else in the other person except the body. And so, I must be this person, which is this body. And this is our indoctrination. This is our assumption. Even if you cut off one of the leg or one of the arm, one ear, nose, one eye goes away, nothing happens to the eye. You say the body is damaged. I am the one who holds this damaged body. I am the one who owns this body now. If asked, which part of the body are you? If we replace one by one all the parts of the body, what will happen to you? Some of the people are going to say, I am the one who will change. I won't remain myself. You change my face, I won't remain myself. But you will find that that which remains knows that I had a different face, I had a different organ, I had a different limb. So it is the same one that remained. Probably other people won't be able to recognize you. For, for them, you will be somebody different. But you will not be able to say that I changed. You can only say that the body changed somehow, the appearance changed. So the appearance, the face, the organs, the cells, nothing is essential to the eye. You can say that my sensations define me. If I don't sense anything, there won't be eye. The sensations are changing. One or two senses, if they go away, I'm not going to say I went away completely. I'm changed completely. I only say that I cannot sense these things now. I cannot hear nowadays. Similarly, some people can say, the feelings are me. If I stop feeling things, I will be gone. I will be dead body. Feelings are just sensations also. They are being felt in the body. Sometimes you are feeling something. Sometimes you are feeling something else. Sometimes you are feeling cold. Sometimes you are feeling hot. These states, they come and go. But you never say that I also went away with the feeling. The feelings are unnecessary, non-essential. 
You can say the emotions are me. Sometimes I'm feeling happy. That is me. I am happy. Sometimes I feel sad. The emotion is of sadness. I am sad. This is this is our language of ignorance that we use to describe what is going on. What is the state of the I? But the happy state does not last. The sad state does not last. The emotion of anger goes away. The emotion of fear goes away. The emotion of lust or jealousy comes and goes. The emotion of love and hate comes and goes. The I never comes and goes. The I remains. So these emotions are not the essential factor there. Probably it is my thought. If I stop thinking, I will be gone. And it is very easy to see that you can stop thinking. The I will remain. The I will start thinking again. The thoughts, they change so fast that none of them is me. You probably don't even remember all of your thoughts and emotions and whatever. Probably you will say that my desires are me, my wants and wishes are me. You remove them, I will not remain or I will become somebody else. You can check it also through your direct experience. So many desires that came and went. Some of them will, were fulfilled, some still are lingering there. They are in the queue. Okay, the, that wish that I hold it now is me. But what about the ones that already went away? This one also will go away. But the I will remain. Now, some very intelligent people are going to say, the memory is me. You remove the memory and the I is gone. This is some half-truth, isn't it? <laughs> you must have seen all those movies where the memory is washed away and then nothing remains there. The person says, I don't know who I am. And let us find out. Yes, if all of it goes away, then probably it will be very difficult for you to even question who am I because the language will be gone. You will become like a baby. The baby never questions who am I. You need a certain amount of knowledge to even find out who am I. So if everything is removed from the memory, all knowledge is destroyed, then the question will never arise. Or if there is some memory, then you will remain like an animal or a tiny baby, innocent. They do not ask. What is my essence? So let us find out. You will see that most of the things that you have done in your life, you have forgotten. Other memories have re replaced your earlier memories and you don't even bother checking them. They're not important. The memory is not one thing. You must have noticed this. The memory is just a collection of events that are stored there. So you will find that the memory is always changing. The events, they are impressed on the memory. And the older ones, they are forgotten. At least you are uh, incapable of recalling all of them. So we cannot really say that I am the one to whom these and these and these things happened. Because the memory of it can go away anytime. I will remain. Now I am the one who forgot. This is what people say usually. I can't recall what happened in my life. I can't recall meeting such and such people. Such and such person. They never say I am reduced by that amount. Because my memory is reduced. And if we recall something, we'd never say that I am augmented by this memory. We say that we experience these memories. The memories are the experience. They are not the I. You can say but that they are mine. I own them. The body is mine. You can surely say that the objects are mine because you, you are using it. But any day somebody else can start using the objects. They can be taken away. And now they are no, no, no longer yours. Before you bought them, they were not yours. So you see, the mind is a temporary phase where the circumstances allowed you to use that object. You can say the house is mine. But any day you can sell it. Or your government can come and take it away. That's what the governments do. They are allowing you to hold that property. Otherwise, the land belongs to the government actually. The one who is ruling you can take it away any day. Any day. And... You can say the relatives are mine. They can leave you any day. Keeps happening all the time. So the mind is also changing, you see. Which means it is not true, simply. That which changes is not true. It is a temporary situation which can change any second. You, but you can say, okay, but the body is mine. Nothing can take me, take the body from me. Remember, most of your bodies are gone now. The current one, today's body, you are claiming as me. So it is the same situation as any other object. You can say, no, 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 wait a minute. I do not control the other objects, but I control this body. Only I can control this body. I can lift my hand, I can walk, I can talk. 
Remember, you can control your car also. You can turn it. You can turn on the lights. You can turn on the stereo. You can stop it. You can start it. You can change anything in your car. You have the control over the car. That does not make it I the car. And since you can let it go any day, that does not make it my car. Remember, the body was not here. It is changing and it will be gone. It is meaningless to call the body as mine. You are the current user, and who has allowed this use? Mother Nature, obviously. Mother Nature takes it away. It is very delicate. Stop breathing for five minutes, gone. A tiny amount of poison or virus, gone. A fall from ten feet, gone. If it it were mine, I would be in total control. But no, the digestion happens without your controlling. The excretion happens without control. The breathing happens without control. Even the thinking happens without control. Otherwise, you would choose only to think good thoughts, intelligent thoughts, happy thoughts. The desires happen without control. This is a very elaborate illusion that you have created for yourself. That falls in the category of a delusion. It is not mine. Similarly, this claim that the emotions are mine or the anything sensations are mine. These are all delusions. These are all assumptions that we have assumed, and this uh, serves a very good purpose. Actually, it is not completely useless. This delusion provides a way to survive. You say the body is mine. Suddenly, you know which body to feed, which body should protect itself. You say the objects are mine. Suddenly, you know what to use and what not to use. You cannot go and use. the property of your neighbor you know that is not mine why because there can be consequences the neighbor can shoot you 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 restrict the use of things that legally belong to you similarly you know which desires to fulfill because you can you are the one who sees them you feel hungry you know that is my feeling that is how you take action on it so the these thoughts these assumptions they are the programs in this memory that enable the organism to survive that's all the me and mine are created as a part of the survival process the babies don't have it simple animals don't have it probably the evolved animals they have all this uh, notions of me and mine and yours anyhow none of these is essential because they can be dropped the me and mine goes away any time and uh, one more thing you must have noticed that it keeps shifting in the position of the i and my shifts from objects to body to organs to organ system some people are very fond of calling their brain as i <laughs> and anything else in the position of the i keeps shifting it shifts to memories it shifts to desire and if the, that i is changing so much that means it is not the truth anything that changes is not true the associations that happen with this word i they keep changing continuously and therefore the word i points to nothing special it is not consistent changes over time changes over places changes as the memories change and so on some people have very funny notions that they say that i am the one who will survive the death of the body the funny things there they have never seen it <laughs> it is another imagination another delusion then there are some who will say this and that metaphysical entity is me and the people who call themselves spiritual so called spiritual people they will say like this oh, i know these things are not me these mental things the physical things not me i am somebody special and i am born as the human but the funny thing is they have never seen it and that is another delusion the eye does not like this monkey body and so it has created something fantastic light body is me now it is not you also <laughs> it is your imagination which keeps changing somebody has stuffed this idea in your mind and if you have seen the light body as you that means it is just another experience where is that light body now is gone the eye has stayed so what is it which has stayed what is it that did not change when all these various experiences changed the answer is very simple that which observed all these changes stayed what is it that observes all the, all the changing experiences by definition it is the experiencer i am that background 
which witnessed all that changed and it is the one who witnessed all the delusions and identifications assumptions and associations that happened while these things changed the intellect kept calling all these things me 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 then they were gone in split second some people may want to say that i am what i do my profession my skills my education and if you recall when you did not have the skills you were not you did not disappear and if you forget your profession or you change it change your jobs change your title you are not going to disappear so these associations they keep happening because you never peacefully knowingly intelligently investigated your real nature you never did that most of it is indoctrination whatever others have told you the ignorant people around you you have uncritically accepted you were not skeptic you were a green branch and the society has molded it into what you think you are you are not that which you think you are examine your beliefs critically be your own skeptic disbelieve your assumptions don't believe don't believe the thoughts that arise come and go these experiences do not define you the experiences as we saw earlier do not define the experiencer the pictures on the screen they do not define the screen yes but the experience must be my essential part because i've never seen myself without the experience now here comes the twist <laughs> they are the part of the existence which you are as the experiencer but they are not the essential part they are what that appears that's all remember we are investigating the question what is my essential nature you can also ask okay i know my essential nature what is my non essential nature and that is the experience now you can accept back all these things that you negated that you rejected oh these things are also me but they keep changing so non essential part just like the clay pot its shape can change you can decorate it with any color you can add jewels on it you can put anything in there you can give it a title doctor mr professor engineer so on these are add ons the essential nature is clay and then you can wipe it out and paint it with another color non essential 